Oh, this is a TI-84 guy. I'm back with the part two of the video. Uh, I just wanted to go go through and demo a few uh, problems that I've taken from old uh, practice SATs to to show you how you would use the fraction and the uh, decimal um, part. Um, I have to say this once more. Um, this this program is actually written for the TI-84 plus CE. It's not written for the TI-84 plus. At some point, I will make the changes uh, to the TI-84 plus, but for right now, um, this program will only work on the CE version. All right, so now, let me go through about six questions, kind of show you how you would use the, um, the uh, program. All right, so, this first one <clears throat> I originally did in the quadratic video where I was uh, demoing the pro uh, program and one of the things that I mentioned was that because it had a decimal leading coefficient the, the other program that I wrote couldn't handle it and it would display I can only I can only uh, deal with integers so now that I've made changes to it we can use this program so so let me read this real quick. The equation above expresses the approximate height h in meters of a ball t seconds after it's launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of, of 25 meters per second. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? So basically what we're trying to determine is you throw the ball up in the air when does it hit the ground? We're looking for roots. So, uh, so let's see if I can get these in here. Turning it on. Um, let's go, it's program, I call it quadrate uh, with an E at the end. Okay, press that. Now press enter again. We want it in the standard form because we're going to be entering this function. So you press that. The, um, the leading coefficient is a negative 4.9. Enter. The B term is 25. The C term is zero. Press enter. All right, now we want the roots. So we're gonna put, choose option four. Tells you that the roots are 250 over 49. If you divide that, you'll see that that's about 5.1. So our answer would be D. Okay, so that's how you would use that piece. Um, that was from practice SAT test number one. All right, here's another one. Now this one was taken from the uh, test number seven. Let me make sure I get it in here. It's really hard to maneuver the calculator, the camera, and the paper, so. <clears throat> okay, so this one has a leading coefficient of one over three. Uh, it's in the standard form. And they're saying that find the value of K that allows you to factor this, right? So let's use the program again we're going to enter in standard form so it's going to be 1 divided by 3 and there's no B term so we're going to put in 0 the C term would be a negative 2 now let's see if we can factor it alright so I press factor and it says not factorable what that means is that there is no rational factors for this particular um, function now the K value that they're referring to means that there must be they must be irrational so just from doing that you should be able to eliminate a and b now you got two choices either c or d now to figure out which one we're going to use let's go back enter the leading coefficient one over three b term is zero c term is a negative two now in this case we're just going to find the roots right but because they're irrational it's going to be a decimal so we got irrational roots uh, 2.44948973. Um, I already know that the uh, square root of 2 is about 1.41 or something to that effect. So I know the answer is uh, D, but let's do it again. Let's, let's check it. So we're going to do the square root of 6. Uh, press enter. And you'll see, you can see those two match exactly. Okay, so the answer for that one would be D. Okay, now... Um, let's go back here. Um, 
Now this one was taken from test SAT number six. Let me get it all lined up in here. All right, so basically what we have is we're given a uh, quadratic and factored form and they want to know the sum of the solutions. And they give you these four choices. Now, what makes this a little bit more difficult and why you can't use the original quadratic program is that one of the factors has a decimal in it, 0.7. So this is how you would use it. Press enter. Um, actually, we got to go to the program since I calculated something. Seven. Press enter. All right, so we're going to put it in in factored form. So we're going to choose option three. And the A term is one. The F term is also 1. The O term is a negative 6. The I term is 1. And the L term is 0.7. Press Enter. All right, so now we want to know the sum. sum. So we choose option 5. It tells us that the sum is 53 divided by 10. So that would be choice C. All right, so it handles decimals, fractions. Let's keep going. All right, here's another one. Now, this one was taken from the practice SAT test number three. It's actually in the non-calculator section, but I wanted to include it just to show you the functionality of the program. So uh, let me read this a question. Again, we have another uh, quadratic and factored form. It says the quadratic equation above um, a is a non-zero constant. The graph of the equation in the xy plane is a parabola with the vertex at c comma d. Which is the following? Which of the following is equal to d? Basically, what they want to know is when it's in vertex form, what is the value of the y the y coordinate? So we can do that now. Um, you can put any non-zero number in for a. Plug in any non-zero number for a. I'm actually going to use a fraction just to show you how it would handle it. All right, so I'm going to choose the factored form, number three. The a term is going to be one over two. I'm going to make it one half. The uh, f term is one. The o term is a negative two. The i term is one. The l term is four. Okay, now... I want to put it in vertex form. So as you can see, the vertex, the y coordinate part, is going to be a negative 9 over 2. If you look at your answer choices, and if you plug in the value I chose 1 half for a, it would be a negative 9 times 1 half, which would be 9 over 2. So the answer for this one would be a. Okay. Now you didn't have to put in a fraction for a. You could have cho chosen any number. Uh, but I decided to just use the fraction just to show you that it can handle a fraction. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, I got a couple more to do and then I'm going to wrap it up. Now, this one comes from the PSAT, from the number one, the practice test one for the PSAT. And I think it's a really good problem. And I'm, I'm actually putting in a um, kind of a plug for one of my other programs while I do this. Okay, I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna show you how I would I would solve this. So it says the XY plane above shows one of the two points of an intersection of the graph uh, of a linear function and a quadratic function. The shown points, shown point of intersection has a coordinates of, of, of VW, so VW. If the vertex of the graph of the quadratic function is at 419, what is the value of V? So we're trying to find basically the X coordinate here of the intersection. All right. So here's how I would do it. If I were taking this test, this is exactly how I would do it. First thing I would do, turn on my calculator. I would go to the programs and I would use my A linear program. Okay. I've, I have a video that basically goes over the A linear program. So if you want to take a look at that. I'll include a link at the end so you can go watch that. But I think it's a really useful program, especially since there's so many uh, linear functions on the test. All right, in this case, we know two points. They gave us two points, so we're going to enter those two points. So the first point is a negative two or two, comma negative one. And then the other point is zero, negative nine. So I'm going to enter zero and negative nine, right? And then I want the equation. 
So the equation is going to be 4, negative 9. Now here's the key. Um, whenever it calculates the equation for a linear function, it stores it in y1. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to get three points on the uh, parabola and I'm going to come up with the equation for the quadratic. But it's also going to try to store it in y1. So I'm going to move that equation down here to 4x to y2 and then I'm just going to go back. Now I'm going to go get my other program, the quadratic program. Press that and I need three points so I'm going to choose option four. All right, so one of the points I can clearly see is 0, 3. One of my other points is 4, 19. All right, now I need a third point. So where's the other point? So I'm going to use the symmetry. Since this is a vertex, I know over here, uh, since this is 4, this is 0, that this has to be 8, and it's going to be at the same level, so 8, 3. So I can enter that now. So that's my third point, 8. 3 and I want it let's say in the factor form it really doesn't matter uh, it's not factorable oh but but the equation has been generated anyway so it it always will generate whenever you choose um, three points it'll always generate the equation no matter what happens whatever output you ask for so here are my two equations now if I graph it it should basically look like this okay so that's the parabola that's the line and I want to find the intersection so I'm going to go second trace option 5 and then I'm going to move it over closer to this one because this is the intersection there's actually two intersections but this is the one I want one two three tells me that the intersection occurs at six uh, 15 so well, we wanted the y or we wanted the x coordinates so it would be 6. So that's our answer for this one. So um, if you haven't already looked at the a linear program, I would suggest that you take a look at it and like I said, I'll make sure to include a link at the end so you can go watch that and, and let me know if you want to if you want that one. I think it's useful. Now here's my last um, problem. Now I've done this one. I've created a video of this already. But I wanted to do, I wanted to include it here because I really, to me, this is the essence of why this program is so useful. All right. So let me read the question. It says, if the function f is defined, f of x equals 3x squared minus 5x plus 4, what is f of x minus 4? All right. So basically this is a quadratic function in standard form. And they want us to transform it by shifting it four units to the right. Okay going to the right right and then they want but they want you to put the transformed uh, quadratic in the standard form so here's what I thought I said okay why don't I just put it put this in the vertex form and because this is a horizontal shift the y value is not going to change all I have to do is change the x coordinate and then I can put it back in the standard form so let me show you how that would work so get out of this all right, press enter. All right, so now I'm going to enter. I'm going to enter it in the standard form. So it's 3. Then we got a negative 5. Then we have 4. And then I'm going to put it in the vertex form. So now the leading coefficient is 3. The x coordinate is, a, is 5 over 6. The y coordinate is 23 over 12. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the vertex form. So the leading coefficient is still 3. Um, the original vertex is 5 over 6. And now I'm going to add 4 to shift it to the right, 4 units. And then I'm going to keep the same y value divided by 12. Right? And now I'm just going to put it back in the standard form because that's what they're asking us for. So I would choose option 3. And boom, there you are. 3x squared minus 29x plus 72. So it would be choice D. Right? So that was a, to me, that was a really great example of why it's very useful to have this program on your calculator. All right? So now, um, let me say a couple quick things. Um, 
First of all, if you want this program, you got to subscribe. And I'll put this subscription link right here um, at the end of the video. Uh, also, you need to like the video and send me your email. And, and please include your email. There's been a couple of students that have, or people who have contacted me for a copy of my program and they don't include their email address or they've misspelled their email address so when I try to send it to them uh, it doesn't go through so make sure you include your email address and that it's spelled correctly all right uh, also um, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to grow my channel and I'm trying to help as many students as possible um, prepare for the SAT ACT PSAT uh, actually math level one math level two as well so if you would share this video with some of your friends or your classmates, I'd appreciate it. Uh, and again, um, I'm going to try to create a couple more pro, uh, uh, videos that demo, demos, demonstrate some of my pro, um, programs by the end of the summer. But um, anyway, uh, good luck. And if you'd like to get a copy of the program, um, send me, shoot me an email. Thank you.